Hello, this is Anna Zobel, and I'm just sharing a few verses from the Come Follow Me lesson on Jacob 1 through 4. So, and this is for my Sunday school class. Um, the first verse is in Jacob 4, and the verses are 11 through um, 14. And I just wanted to pick out a few phrases if you want to read along. Uh, in verse 11, it says, Wherefore, beloved brethren, be reconciled unto him through the atonement of Christ, his only begotten Son, that you may obtain a resurrection according to the power of the resurrection which is in Christ, and be presented as the first fruits of Christ unto God, having faith and obtained a good hope of glory in him before he manifesteth himself in the flesh. So the highlighted words that I put in there was reconciled unto him through the atonement of Christ. And um, I just think this is a really good example of uh, how much Christ is in the Book of Mormon. And also it's pointing us back to the plan of salvation that God has for all of his children, which is that we can return to him through the atonement of Christ. Now in verse... 13, skipping ahead. Well, in verse 12, it says, um, it's asking how do we attain um, that knowledge of the atonement of Christ. And in verse 13, um, it says, Behold, my beloved brethren, he that prophesieth, let him prophesy unto the Spirit, uh, unto the understanding of men, for the Spirit speaketh the truth and lieth not. Wherefore it uh, speaketh of things as they really are, as they really, of uh, things as they really will be, and wherefore there, these things are manifested unto us plainly for the salvation of our souls. But behold, we are not witnesses alone in these things, for God also spake unto them, spake them unto the prophets of old. So the phrase that I've highlighted in there is, these things are manifested unto us plainly. For the salvation of our souls. And again, going back to the plan of salvation and Christ's atonement, it's really great that, and I'm so grateful that Heavenly Father has given us prophets and apostles and people that minister to us and um, truly teach us this plan of salvation in plain um, terms and help us to understand these things. Um, and then at the in verse 14, it says, but behold, the Jews were stiff-necked people, and they despised the words of plainness and killed the prophets and sought for things that they could not understand. Wherefore, because of their blindness, which blindness came from look by looking beyond the mark, they must needs fall. For God hath taken away from uh, his plainness from them and <clears throat> excuse me, delivered unto them many things that they cannot understand because they desired it. Because they desired it, God um, hath done it that they might stumble. Um, and the phrase that I highlighted on this verse was in the middle of the verse. It says, which blindness came by looking beyond the mark. And um, what I, you know, what the lesson emphasizes about this is that, you know, what, if you're looking beyond the mark, like what's the mark? What are we supposed to be looking for? And again, it all comes back to Christ that he is the mark and that you don't want to look beyond him. Um, you know, there was a lot in the New Testament about the Pharisees and Sadducees. You know, they would take the law and then they'd create a whole fence around the law. And sometimes they'd look beyond the things that were important and only be focused on the different little rules that they were supposed to um, follow and that kind of thing. And they would condemn people for not following those extra rules. Um, and so for us, we need to truly focus on Christ and focus on his two great commandments, which are loving God and loving our fellow man. And so we need to remember, it's something that I like to remind myself often, is that the gospel is all about relationships. It's all about how we treat the people around us and how we build that relationship with our Heavenly Father. And so that is the mark. And so sometimes... I jokingly say, you know, sometimes we get so much in our lists of things that we need to do 
you know, that if you are sitting there trying to read your scriptures and your family member comes up to talk to you and you yell at them and say, go away, I'm trying to be spiritual, you know, and that's a little bit, you know, missing the mark that that relationship is more important than the thing, the list thing that you're trying to do. Okay, so the last verse I was going to emphasize is in uh, Jacob chapter 2, uh, 17 through 19. Um, and this is just one of, you know, one of my personal favorites in the Book of Mormon. It talks about, um, there's a lot, uh, a lot of people misunderstand when they read in the Bible <clears throat> about, you know, it's hard to get into heaven if you're rich, that kind of thing. And so it says, verse 17 says, think of yourself, think of your brethren like unto yourselves and be familiar with all and free with your substances that they may be rich like unto you. But seek ye. But before you seek for riches, seek ye for the kingdom of God. And after ye have obtained a hope in Christ, ye shall obtain riches if ye seek them, and ye will seek them with the intent to do good, to clothe the naked, feed the hungry, liberate the captive, and minister relief to the sick and the afflicted. So again, this actually comes back to those first two great commandments. He says, first, seek the kingdom of God. So really establish your um, relationship with Heavenly Father. And then second, he says, if you seek for riches, then you can obtain them. Um, and because you are focusing on God, then you're going to want to live that second great commandment. And you're going to want riches to be able to help more people. Um, I've heard different phrases such as, you know, riches just make more of what you already are. And so if you already are a God-fearing person that wants to do good in the world, then riches would just make it so that you could do more good for more people and help your reach be farther. So anyway, I'm going to end with that. I hope you all have a fabulous Sabbath. And I just want to bear my testimony that I know that the Book of Mormon has the words of Christ in it. It teaches about Christ. It teaches about the atonement of Christ and that it truly can help point us to God and help us to grow closer to God. And I hope that we can all take this opportunity studying the Book of Mormon to grow, grow our own relationships with God. And I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.